Right now at noon, several storms are coming to the area later today. We have the latest radar on and how much rain you should expect. Plus, former President Trump is back in court today as jury selection continues in his hush money trial. Thank you all for joining us. This is News 3 Now at Noon. I'm Jalen Banks. We begin with severe weather heading toward the southern part of the state. Storms are expected to arrive later this afternoon. Along with them, we could see severe thunderstorms and heavy rain. For the latest on these storms, meteorologist Jacob Montesano has a look. It's your first one forecast. Jacob. Thanks, Jalen. We are expecting to see at least a few storms across our area, as you mentioned. The peak time for this will be kind of right around rush hour going home and a few hours afterwards. So if you can get home a bit early today, I would advise for that because you don't want to be driving in some of these storms. Now, here's a look at the alert day information. All of southern Wisconsin this afternoon and evening, although the window of severe weather will only be a few hours. Uh, we could possibly be seeing hail, wind, maybe even an ice laid tornado within some of these thunderstorms. So looking at the current radar, we are still dry at this hour, but if we zoom further out, there are there's already a tornado watch and a few severe thunderstorm warnings along with a few tornado warnings across portions of Iowa, Missouri and Nebraska. These storms are expected to move into our area later today. Here's a look at the severe weather outlook, a marginal risk for the northeastern portion of Dane County and areas uh, continuing to the northwest and southeast of that slight risk to get further southwest and even further southwest. There is an enhanced risk for portions of Grant County just to the southwest of Platteville. But as I mentioned, a lot of our area, pretty much everywhere within the slight risk, I would say is pretty likely to see some severe storms, at least within uh, a few miles of your location. So looking at um, a few other advisories, there's also a wind advisory in effect off to the north for Juneau and Adams County. Our entire area will see some pretty gusty winds. So here's a look at the timing of the storms. We'll see them start to move in a little bit later in the afternoon. Places near Iowa will see them around 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. That's where they're going to start moving in. And then they'll move into the rest of our area a little bit later, especially between around 5 p.m. and 7 p.m., lasting a little bit until closer to 8 p.m. for Eastern and northern counties, but by the time the storms get past Dane County, the severe weather risk will diminish a little bit. So although rain is expected a little bit later for you folks east and north, those of you east and north aren't expected to see quite as much severe weather with the system, and then a lot of it will clear out later into the early overnight hours. So storms are likely and some severe weather is also likely. We'll continue to provide updates throughout the afternoon and I'll have more details on this coming up in just a little bit. All right, sounds good, Jacob. Thank you. As our first one weather team tracks the storm, you can stay on top of the changing conditions by downloading the first one weather app. Just search for WISC weather in your app store. Parents and teachers are furious with the state of education in Wisconsin. At an MMSD board meeting last night, teachers and parents weighed in on the lack of support for Madison students. One mother spoke about her son with special needs. She says he's never had issues at MMSD until this year. According to her, his case manager is overwhelmed with the number of students he's been assigned. When is special education going to become a priority? And when are we going to start putting more money into our schools? to take care of the kids that are there right now. Kids like my son. I'm just here to be a voice for the kids and the parents that won't stand up. My kid is worth something and so are the other kids that are there. Speakers presented petitions signed by school staff members asking the board for student-centered staff allocations. More than 2,000 staff members across 47 of MMSD's 52 schools signed those petitions with support from parents. Low pay and the demand to be superhuman just to barely make things work is too much to ask of any professional. Teachers are asking for a cost of living adjustment of 4.12%. This as the board is considering a 0% adjustment to cut costs for the next school year. Multiple teachers at the meeting last night blamed Act 10 for many of the issues they're facing now. Former Republican Governor Scott Walker passed that in 2011. It cut teacher benefits and reduced their collective bargaining rights. Madison police are looking for a group who attacked a man outside the East Wash McDonald's around 5 p.m. Sunday. While inside, he saw someone trying to take his bike and ran after them. Unable to catch the thief, the victim returned to the parking lot. That's where a group of people attacked him. The victim says one of the attackers claimed to have had a gun. Anyone with information about this incident should call the Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen and it is 608-266-7000.
608-266-6014. Again, that is 608-266-6014. You can also submit a tip to p3tips.com. Donald Trump's historic criminal trial in New York resumed today. As lawyers from both sides question possible jurors, Michael George has the story from New York. Former President Trump was back in court for day two of jury selection in his hush money trial. Some accountant that I didn't know marked it down as a legal expense. That's exactly what it was. And you get indicted over that? On Monday, the first batch of 96 prospective jurors were questioned, with more than half excused after saying they could not be fair and impartial. And as questioning moves forward, CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman says both sides need to look out for so-called stealth jurors. The juror who answers everything perfectly because he or she wants to be on that jury and vote the way that he or she does not appear that they will vote. Trump is accused of scheming to funnel payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels through his former lawyer Michael Cohen to cover up an alleged affair when he was running for president in 2016. Both could be potential witnesses at the trial, and last week Trump slammed them on social media, calling them sleazebags. Prosecutors want Trump to be held in contempt for violating a gag order. A hearing on that will be held later this month. This is all coming from the Biden White House because the guy can't put two sentences together. Trump denies any wrongdoing and calls the proceeding a politically motivated witch hunt. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Now, Trump is required to be present at the trial, and he criticized the judge for not allowing him to attend a U.S. Supreme Court hearing next week on his presidential immunity claims. And still ahead for us this afternoon, Tesla plans to make cuts to its global workforce. Also, the parent company of Ticketmaster could soon be facing a lawsuit from the Department of Justice. That's coming up in your Money Watch report. Make entertaining and enjoying your home extraordinary with the luxurious look of Pella. At Pella, we see windows differently with the highest energy efficient products and range of options that add long lasting value to your home. From sleek design, custom colors, and long lasting durability, getting the style and functionality you want has never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for up to 18 months. Visit PellaWI.com today. Are you suffering with neck pain, back pain, or sciatica due to disc-related conditions? You may have tried drugs, spinal injections, or physical therapy just to find out it didn't help. You're not alone. The problem is that some of those treatments focus on symptom relief, but may not address the underlying disc problem. As a result of injury or overuse, the discs may bulge, herniate, or degenerate over time. Our therapies are highly successful and reduce pain associated with those conditions and may help you avoid neck or back surgery. At Midwest Spine and Nerve Center, we'll design a treatment program using the latest in pain relieving therapies, including non-surgical spine decompression, Pro Adjuster 360 computerized technology, laser therapy, and more. Visit our website or call to schedule a complimentary consultation. Thousands of our heroes face the difficult choice between keeping their heat and power on or facing homelessness. 21,000 Wisconsin veterans are living below the poverty line, many impacted by physical or mental health challenges. Wisconsin loses three veterans to suicide every week. Together, our mission is to provide all struggling Wisconsin veterans with a critical survival safety net that keeps them safely in their homes. You can make a real difference by providing a donation to the Wisconsin Heat and Housing for Heroes Initiative. With 95 cents of every dollar donated, going directly to those right here in your community. Help by visiting www.heatforheroes.org or by calling 1-800-891-9276. That's 800-891-9276. Precision is very proud of our five-star reviews. I do everything I can to go above and beyond for repairs. <laughs> no, I'm not an actor. I'm a garage door tech. That's what I do here at Precision. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust.
The Wall Street Journal reports that the Department of Justice could be preparing to bring an antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation, parent company of Ticketmaster. The company came under increased scrutiny after a November 2022 meltdown of Ticketmaster's website during the pre-sale of Taylor Swift's Eras Tour tickets. Ticketmaster is estimated to have a market share of more than 70% of the U.S. ticketing industry. A jolt to the workforce at Tesla this week. CEO Elon Musk says his electric car company plans to cut about 10% of its global workforce, which would be about 14,000 workers. Tesla saw a roughly 10% drop in sales in the first quarter of this year. Its stock is also down more than 30%. Musk says the job cuts will help Tesla become lean and innovative. And H&R Block says the computer glitch that temporarily blocks some taxpayers from filing returns on yesterday's deadline has been fixed. The tax preparation company said there was a problem with its downloadable desktop software. H&R Block says the vast majority of its customers who use the online version of the filing tool were not impacted. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. And here's some numbers at the noon hour of your stock report. The Dow Jones is up 74.73 points. The Nasdaq is down 4.75 points. And the S&P 500 is up 1.72 points. And our Call for Action team volunteers are in the building taking your consumer complaints and taking action on your behalf. Volunteers are here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can call for action at 608-270-2833. Again, that is 608-270-2833. Or you can submit a claim anytime at channel3000.com slash call for action. And up next, Pam is watching today's ag prices and we're tracking your first one forecast. Then later on Live at 4, winter thankfully is out of the way, so it's time to clean up the yard. Consumer Reports has some recommendations for the best tools for your lawn and garden. Get an 11% rebate on everything at Menards. Mastercraft makes great doors inside and out. Design your door your way using our door designer. Or choose from our large in-stock selection. Get this exterior door with decorative glass for $349.99 after rebate. Update your home with low-maintenance vinyl windows from Childwen. They're durable and energy efficient. Pick up a 24 by 24 vinyl sliding window for only $99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. We've all seen what's happening at our border. President Biden and Senator Baldwin's open border policy has brought more than 10 million illegal immigrants into our country. That's double the population of Wisconsin. Our country was already struggling to provide housing and health care to our citizens. And tragically, we're losing over 100,000 Americans a year to the drugs that pour over our open border. Their policy is wrong. I'm Eric Covdy. I approve this message, and I'll work to fix this problem. Discover the joy of giving back with Habitat for Humanity and Habitat Restore of Dane County. I love the cause. I love the people. I love helping the customer with their home projects. It's a lot of fun. I've made lasting friendships and you get a sense of accomplishment. Help build a brighter future. Volunteer today. Two iconic rock bands. One night of history. The Marshall Tucker Band. Jefferson Starship. On Cloud Nine Tour. Saturday, May 25th, Ho Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. All the hits. All the history. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. For the first time ever, the Marshall Tucker Band, Jefferson Starship, together. We are following those stories very closely with team coverage. When breaking news happens. We continue to follow a tense situation in Janesville. Trust News 3 Now to alert you. Lock your doors, stay inside. The Dane County Sheriff's Office looking for a pair of people, a man and woman who they say are armed. To keep you informed. The scene is still very active here on Highway 51. And to help you stay safe. Your trusted source for breaking news and continuous coverage. News 3 Now, moving forward. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Welcome back at noon and thank you for staying with us. Let's check in with Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report. Pam, how are you today? 
You know, I'm all right right now, but I think that weather is going to change mm. my opinion later this afternoon into the evening. You know, we've been doing a lot with the sunny, sunny, dry weather that we've had over the past couple of days, and that includes Wisconsin farmers. The latest update from the Wisconsin Ag Statistical Service shows that as of Sunday, we had about 10% of our oats already in the ground. 11% of our potatoes had been planted, 12% of the spring tillage work already done. Because of the little bit of moisture that we've picked up along with the heat, winter wheat condition rated about 6 65% good, 13% excellent. Pasture conditions are going to continue to improve as well. And even uh, with some of that severe stuff that's coming through, like we heard, uh, at least there's rain in the forecast. And that would be welcome. So far, we're right on track as far as planting is concerned. And you have to remember, even though you may worry a little bit about the weather that's coming through with the technology that most farmers today are using and the speed that they can plant acre upon acre, uh, really, it would take something catastrophic on the long-term scale to take us off the mark as far as planting is concerned. But again, never say never. We'll wait and see what happens. Boy, you never think that some of these small community food processors are going to close. Of course, WIC reported ConAgra Brands closing their bird's eye facility in Beaver Dam around June 10th. Del Monte Foods up in Marcusan permanently closing their food processing facility up there. They do that at the end of the month. Jason Collada, president of the Midwest Food Products Association, says one of the reasons why some of these companies are uh, forced to ease back on production is the cost of the can that the fresh produce goes into. Because the United States really doesn't have a steel producing facility that makes those cans, we're seeing more and more product come from outside the United States because they don't have to face tariffs on that one item, the can that the food goes into. Uh, outweighs the risk, and that's why you're seeing more and more outside of the U.S. fresh product, vegetables showing up on store shelves near you. Keep an eye out on that. Barrel cheese today up three and three quarter cents at 161. 40 pound black cheese up four and a quarter cents at 161. Double A butter up two, 294 pound. Love to see those arrows going up, that is for sure. I know it doesn't necessarily make it all easy for our dairy farmers that are out there, but I like to see that kind of direction. Now we'll see what direction this weather goes for the rest of the afternoon into the evening hours. Sounds like we better keep an eye on that severe stuff, huh? Yeah, absolutely. But I know that for sure our farmers do need the moisture because we've still been in that drought. Yeah. Hopefully we can bust it. Right. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Pam. And this week on News 3 Now this morning, we're giving away tickets to the Midwest Horse Fair. Every day this week, someone out there will win a four-pack of tickets to the fair. It's at the Alliant Energy Center from the 19th to the 21st. It's a ticket package valued at almost $600 to enter the giveaway for the 2024 Midwest Horse Fair. Log on to channel3000.com slash contest. And parts of southern Wisconsin could see some severe weather that Pam had just mentioned this afternoon. Here's Jacob with the complete forecast. Yeah, and you folks may have seen it on the bottom of the screen, but a tornado watch has been issued for Grant County and areas just to the west and also to the south. This is until 8 p.m. and it wouldn't surprise me if at the very least a lot a lot of other parts of our area see a severe thunderstorm watch, possibly maybe even expanding that tornado watch. But for right now, it is just for Grant County until 8 p.m. So we have that alert day for the possibility of severe weather. I would say we're going to see at least one severe thunderstorm warning, if not a tornado warning, especially in the southwestern portion of our area. But even if we don't see a lot of severe weather, we see rain and we'll Rain, but there also are a few locations across our area, especially those of you near the Rock River that have already seen the river reach the flood stage from earlier this month. So there may be some flooding concerns for you folks around that area, but most of our area will definitely take the rain and we'll get, uh, we'll certainly take what we get. And but beyond that, we are expecting to see some severe weather with some high winds. Hail does look to be the biggest threat, maybe even an isolated tornado. So here's a look at the severe weather outlook, an enhanced risk in the far southwestern portion of our area, and then a slight risk for areas to the north and also to the east of that. This does include Madison. The slight risk kind of cuts Madison in half with a marginal risk just to the north and northeast. But if you remember the tornado we had in February, that was only a marginal risk. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get that strong of a tornado again, but just point, just pointing out that it is possible we do see an isolated tornado, even though some areas are only under a marginal risk. So here's a look at the severe weather impacts. Hail looks to be the biggest impact, then wind, and then flooding and tornado look to be pretty similar. Although the tornado threat is low, it just takes one tornado to cause a lot of damage, which is why uh, we are a little concerned about it. So 
Let me take you through the timing of everything. 3 p.m. The storms are just now entering the southwestern portion of our area. As we get to 4 p.m., still kind of staying off to the south and west of Madison, impacting areas around Platteville, up north towards Prairie du Chien. And as we get closer to 5, we'll start to see those storms move into Dane County. And then 6 to 7, impacting Dane County and surrounding areas, bringing lots of rain to the north. As we get closer to 7 to 8, looks like it will start to move out of Dane County, but areas to the east and north still seeing that rain. But if you remember, areas to the north and east, by the time the storms get to your area, they may not be quite as strong. And then as we get closer to 8 to 9, the storms will be clearing out of our area. By the time we get to 9 to 10, it looks like we'll be pretty dry with just maybe a few showers during the day tomorrow. Now, as I mentioned, we'll see plenty of rainfall with this as well, possibly over an inch for a few locations. We'll take the rain we can get, but just be, it wouldn't surprise me if not only we see some flooding concerns for the areas near uh, rivers and, and creeks, but we could also see a few flooded streets if the rainfall intensity is pretty heavy. Now, as I mentioned, we also have a wind advisory. Our entire area will see some pretty gusty winds during all of this, possibly up to around 40 to 50 miles per hour at times, but it is going to be improved by tomorrow. Pretty much once that system clears out, the winds will be a lot better. Now, here's a full look at the 7 to 10 day forecast. Unfortunately, temperatures are going to cool down for the end of the week as highs will be back in the lower 50s, and then they'll kind of stay pretty steady for the first half of next week. But there's not a lot going on in the forecast after today. But obviously, you know, we are concerned about today. Definitely stay safe. We'll have more updates throughout the day. The further southwest you're located, the better chance you'll see that severe weather. And as you mentioned, guys absolutely have to go outside please stay indoors Thank and like you. I mentioned earlier yeah. in the show if you can I would suggest trying to get home from work a bit earlier because you mm -hmm. don't want to be stuck driving in the it, you know even if there's no severe weather the rain is going to could be very heavy at times so visibility could be pretty down so I would if you can I would say try to get home from work a bit earlier absolutely sounds good Thank You Jacob the Olympic Games are just around the corner. They're nearly 100 days away. Today, the torch relay kicked off in Greece. It'll travel thousands of miles before ending in Paris for the opening ceremony. CBS's Ian Lee brings us a look at the old tradition. The Olympic pageantry taps into the ancient. Greek actresses portray priestesses. On the spot, the Games began in Olympia 2,800 years ago. Rays from the sun ignited the flame before the high priestess passed it on. This modern ceremony dates back to 1936, also a time of tension and turmoil around the world. Today's message was one of hope. We are longing for something that brings us together. We are longing for something that is unifying us. The flame will now undertake a journey of more than 3,100 miles, Runners aren't the only ones to carry the torch. A 19th century French sailing ship, the Bellum, will ferry it from Athens to Marseille, France. It's part of efforts to make these games greener. We're very proud to uh, can carry the flame for the first time by the sea and uh, move the ship by sail. Officials hope the relay will face smooth sailing until the summer games open in Paris on July 26th. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. The original ancient Olympic Games lasted more than a thousand years, but were banned in, 390, in 393 AD in order to promote Christianity. The modern games are a bit younger. They began more than a hundred years ago in 1896. And still to come in your news through now at noon, let's see how Howard's making in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today, I can't wait to introduce you to one of my all-time favorites. And I have a pretty good idea that you're going to fall in love as soon as you taste them, too. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Why won't you? I want fresh air. Uh, hun. You need the experts. The Home Renewal Experts at Belco will make your project a breeze with free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest for six years. Free installation won't last long. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Belco. Do you have both Medicare and Medicaid? 
If so, you may qualify for a dual eligible special needs plan from Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield with benefits and coverage for dental services or routine eye exams. Call now to explore plan options available in your zip code. Learn about the additional care, resources, and support you could have with an Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual special needs plan. Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual eligible special needs plans offer more benefits than you have access to with original Medicare alone. Additional benefits could help you save out-of-pocket costs. These benefits could include a healthy grocery allowance each month, transportation to plan approved medical appointments, or an annual allowance to spend on eyewear. Most of the Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual special needs plans have $0 monthly premiums, $0 copays, or $0 deductibles that can also help you save on out-of-pocket costs. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, don't miss your chance to enroll in a dual special needs plan. Call today to see what plans with additional benefits may be available in your zip code. Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual special needs plans offer more than original Medicare, like annual allowances towards dental, vision, or hearing coverage. These plans offer even more benefits that may provide you with additional care and support. With a 24-7 nurse line, you could have access to a registered nurse to help answer your questions whenever you need. If you're in immediate need of a caregiver or emergency services, these Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield plans provide a personal emergency response system. Contact a caregiver or emergency services at the touch of a button. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, don't miss your chance to enroll in a plan with more benefits than you may have with original Medicare alone. Call today to speak with a licensed agent and explore 2024 dual eligible special needs plans. The call is free and there's no obligation to enroll. Call 800-357-1385. 800-357-1385. That's 800-357-1385. Call now. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the cheese straw. Now, for those of you who have grown up in the South, these need no introduction. After all, cheese straws are like deviled eggs. Every Southern cook has their own special way of making them. And whether we serve them with a bowl of soup, salad, or just as a snack, I promise once you try one of our easy homemade ones, you're gonna be hooked. To make them, all we do is combine some shredded sharp cheddar cheese, a good amount of flour, some softened butter, a little paprika, salt, and a dash of cayenne pepper. Now, using our hands, we mix this together until it forms a soft dough. You see, the warmth of our hands is the key to making a good dough. When that's done, we roll it out so it's about a quarter inch thick. Cut it into strips and place them on a cookie sheet before baking them off. What we end up with is the cheesiest pastry crisp that you could ever imagine. You see, the sharpness of the cheddar combined with the spices make these addictive. So why not go online and get the recipe for our southern cheese straws? And if you add your own twist to these, don't forget to share it with us on MrFood.com. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a classic southern way for you to say, ooh, it's mm. so good. And here's Jacob with the final check of your forecast. Jacob. Thanks, Jalen. If we take a look at the current radar, still not seeing much uh, for us. As, as I mentioned, we do have that tornado watch for Grant County. It does include uh, the far southwestern portion of the state. This is until 8 p.m. We'll continue to provide updates. If there is a tornado warning, we will do wall-to-wall -wall coverage here, so stay tuned if one uh, pops up. So here's a look at the current radar still out in Iowa, but it is moving towards our area. I expect storms to start around 3 to 4 p.m. All right, well, sounds good. We'll see you back here at Live at 4.